you know, I've been looking all over the internet, all these reviews and whatnot, and you know, Wendell, I don't think anyone has, well, the whole picture. Oh, that stuck that one in on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've just joined us for Bad Pun Hour, but we're going to talk about Haswell as well. Ha we're going to talk about it as what? <laughs> no. I, I planted seeds. <laughs> this is not going to happen. Um, so we got to play with Haswell quite a bit. We didn't release a review with everybody else because our production sample exploded. Intel's gone crazy with the parts. There are a lot of SKUs this time. Two pages in their PDF was dedicated to the i5 SKUs. The only one that most of you guys are going to be uh, caring about is the K. Um, and the i5... 4670K is going to be the one that comes after the 3570K. I'm on Elric's website right now, Tech with Tomorrow, checking out um, everything over there. All right, here you see tons of i7 SKUs as well. The one that most of you guys are going to be looking at is the 4770K. It's the new, um, I guess it's the new fastest stock clocked, uh, you know, out of the box quad core in the world as far as the consumer part goes. The 3820 competes in some levels, but the 4770K is the fastest. We're going to talk about overclocking in a second, but first thing I want to note uh, that the 4770K has everything, but there's no VTD extensions. The Intel V Pro is, is just not there. It's inexplicable. I'm not sure why it's not there. It's on all the other parts. Uh, the other part I want to mention, the 4770R, uh, that's going to be a part that's soldered to the chip. It's, it's not a socket. It's a BGA, so you have to get it with the motherboard. It's there's no there's no switching, but it's the only one that has the Intel Iris Pro Graphics 52. It's the uh, 5200 instead of the 4600. It's the only one. A lot of people were worried because the Ivy Bridge was notoriously hot, and everyone was like, "Is this still going to be hot?" And I've received a lot of emails that say, "Hey man, I know you're not allowed to say anything about it, but does this get hot?" Okay, I'm allowed to say something about it. It gets freaking hot. It is crazy. It's insanely hot. It gets hotter than the uh, than the 38 or the 8350 from AMD. It gets really hot. Our engineering sample may have cratered. Yeah, we got an engineering sample, and this is why we have not had a review online yet. Uh, we, we had an engineering sample. We've got several Asus motherboards in the house we're going to be playing with, and uh, we do have a member of Asus coming here this week. JJ. So, yep, JJ. Can't wait to get here, and we're going to cover a lot of stuff uh, as far as all their new SKUs go, a lot of the new technology with the platform, the Z87 platform. It's really exciting. There's all kinds of cool stuff. The Z87 platform uh, makes me a lot more excited than the CPUs. And it may be worth upgrading just for the platform if there's certain features that you're looking for. And a lot of people are saying it's time, if you have Sandy Bridge, it's time to upgrade. And I don't think that's the case if you're a gamer. If you're doing something else besides gaming, productivity, not a lot of overclocking, it might be time to upgrade from Sandy Bridge, but for gaming, no. We're going to do some benchmarks, and we've got a 2600K overclock. We've got a, a 2600K with like a 4.6 overclock in the house. Yeah, those things are nice. And we've got the 3820 behind me. Uh, we've got a couple socket 2011 CPUs, for, as a matter of fact. We've got the 4770K, the 3770K. We ordered two 4770Ks, so that's going to be interesting because our 4770K... Those are retail box. Yeah, retail boxes. A lot of the guys you're seeing that are doing the reviews right now have, re have received you know, engineering samples from Intel, and they might be cherry-picked. I'm not saying they are, but they probably are. Yeah, so. this, this thing is, we're not expecting this to overclock. It's it's really, the thing that it's more stable at is when you do have an overclock and it's got a thermal problem, that it doesn't make the whole system unstable. Now, I say this is designed with mobile in mind because the uh, the way that they throttle, they, they're they really efficient. If they get hot before uh, with the Ivy Bridge, the Sandy Bridge, they would start to become really flaky and unstable uh, when they started to get hot. These do not. You can take them up to 90 degrees and they're still very stable because the throttling that's built in is extraordinarily efficient. So the Intel finally got that right, but at the price of overclocking in general. And also having the, uh, the voltage regulator on board. Here's the other bizarre situation. Because the thermal throttling is so good, you can have a, a ridiculous stable overclock that is not good if you're running benchmark software, but is good if you're running gaming software. Like certain kinds of workloads, you don't see the thermal, you don't see the you don't see the throttling. But the second you run Cinebench, it starts throttling immediately. When you would run Prime 95, it's stable, it's not gonna crash, but it's also throttling, and so you don't know. But if you run your game and it doesn't throttle, then you're good. You see, the way that we knew that the overclock was unstable before is we'd run Prime 95 because that's the hardest thing you can run. But now it doesn't crash, it just runs slower. And it throttles, yeah. So it's, Prime 95 is not a good way to test anymore. Not because Prime 95 will become unstable, but because Prime 95 is not really, it's throttling. Uh, let's talk about power consumption, because that's something that uh, a lot of people have been talking about out there in the world. Uh, they've been 
wanting to know, is it better than Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge? Is it time to upgrade just so I can save some money on my power bill? And the answer is probably going to be no if you're looking for an enthusiast part and probably going to be yes if you're looking for a non-enthusiast part. Uh, for instance, the i7-4770K, just at idle at the stock clock, um, pulls more power here, according to Ryan, uh, from PC perspective, than the i7-3770K. We're also going to run some of these tests with the kilowatt, and that's a little bit different than a lot of the tests you see online, because this plugs into the wall and measures what you're sucking out of the wall, and that's what you pay for. So we're going to measure it with this and just see how much it's drawing when in load and, in, and when in idle. And we've done this with the uh, 8350 and the 3770K, so we're going to put that score up against these and see how much you're really going to be paying for. And I'm going to predict that it, it's going to be pennies to, to dimes extra over the 3770K and pennies to dimes less than like a, uh, a 920. I, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. It's really uh, people kind of, um, I don't they get too excited about the power consumption when at the end of the day, what's coming out of the wall is so insignificantly different that it doesn't matter in the long run. You're, we're talking like 10, 15 bucks a year one way or the other. But with this platform, people can finally have a tiny and silent home theater machine. I mean, you could kind of get close with an underclocked i5 last generation, but this is going to be really silent. I was mentioning the reasons to upgrade, and one of the uh, big reasons to upgrade uh, is, is just the move to a different platform. The Z87 uh, finally gives us six on board, on the chipset, SATA 6 gigabit per second um, ports. So we have that. The USB 3 also does not suck. Then it's like, hey, you know, now we can do RAID with the uh, SATA right on board, SATA 6 right on board. Finally, instead of having to get a second card. I mean, it'll be a logical RAID instead of hardware RAID, but hey, you can do it. The other thing that's nice about the platform, we do have M2 uh, support, and that's going to allow us to use sort of like an M SATA, but it's a lot faster because it's PCI Express, and you'll see those coming in like, you know, yeah, somebody said, hey, MSATA, wait, we're making this weird form factor or SATA port. That's kind of dumb. Why don't we just make it plug directly into the PCI Express bus because SATA is uh, getting to be a bottleneck anyway. If you guys are gaming, the bottom line is that you're probably fine with Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge. If you're doing other things, you may want to upgrade. If you've got a 920, you may want to upgrade. Uh, but I think it's really interesting. You guys should go check out this article on overclockclub.com or overclockersclub.com. They tested it in several different games against several different CPUs, and you don't get that much as far as um, extra frames per second. In fact, it's about the same as the 3770K, even the 2600K, and the 8350 in most games with uh, you know the identical graphics card. So put your money in the graphics card if you're gaming, not in the CPU. I mean, unless you want to go, you guys want to like go hang out in a bar and in a circle and just like, bro, guess how much I spent more than you. If you want to do that, by all means. All this was basically to say that we have more videos coming and we're going to be doing some tests that a lot of people out there are not doing, looking at this in a real world way with parts that we purchased ourselves at a retailer. I want to thank, uh, say thanks to NCIX for helping us out with that. They jumped in and they like, you know, they, they basically hooked us up before the parts were like even on their website. We were like, hey, can you help us? And they emailed back and like, yeah, yeah, and they sent us an invoice. So NCIX US, thanks a lot for the help. Um, and we'll have more stuff coming. Yeah, stay tuned. We'll have full coverage. Yep, and it's not a bad part. I want to. This is not a negative video. It just there's some things you need to know. So I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe.